uh, we can we can write, start right now. So uh, it is a pleasure to have with us uh, today Dr. Martina Gauglu. She's come from the Center of Mathematics uh, in Madrid. She got uh, her PhD at the University of Saloniki with supervisor Vasilis Rothos, and then uh, followed a, a series of uh, postdoc positions at the University of Massachusetts, then at uh, the Slovakia Academy of Science, at the Center of Mathematics in Madrid, then uh, she visited Bristol with a group of Wiggins, and then uh, went back to the Center of Mathematics uh, in Madrid, in Spain. You already see the title uh, of the talk on the screen, Transport Process on uh, Potential Energy Surface with four fuel, uh, with uh, four wells, four index one saddles and index two, then index two saddle. Okay, so it's from the area of nonlinear dynamics. Uh, those that are not working on uh, the field, they have uh, heard several times about the uh, properties of the saddle points and the talks are exactly about them right now. So, okay, uh, we may start. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear okay. you very well. All right, so hello everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank for the invitation. And in my presentation today, I will talk about transport processes in the phase space, and specifically, I will present the results of a four-well potential. So uh, this talk will have two parts. Uh, the first part is theoretical, where I will present the main ideas, and I will talk about the phase space, uh, the method of Lagrangian descriptors, and the chemical reaction dynamics. And in the second part, I will present the four-well example. Uh, this is a joint work uh, with Stephen Wakings from the University of Bristol in the UK and Victor Garcia Garrido from the University of Alcalá in Spain. So um, phase space structures are a geometrical way to look into the solutions of systems of differential equations. So this idea about this uh, geometrical way to look into the solutions was introduced first by Poincaré, as you already know, uh, in the context of celestial mechanics. And given that dynamical systems have many, many applications in many areas, uh, these ideas of Poincaré have a lot of impact uh, in many areas. So uh, this idea looking into the phase space allows in a geometrical perspective to have an intuition just at a glance on how the phase space is divided into regions where trajectories have different qualitative behaviors. And as I mentioned before, uh, these ideas have an impact in many areas. So I will explain in this talk how these ideas can explain the transport uh, in chemical reaction dynamics. Um, so uh, the method of regression descriptors uh, is a scalar trajectory diagnostic that is similar to other chaos indicators such as Lyapunov exponents or alignment indices. And this method of Lagrangian descriptors has the capability of revealing the invariant manifolds in phase space that characterize the system dynamics. So this method can reveal stable and unstable manifolds. And also it can reveal KM3. Uh, and the development of uh, Lagrangian descriptors was originally inspired by the desire uh, to explain the geometrical patterns that govern transport in geophysical flows. So uh, the LDs, the Lagrangian descriptors, are based on a function M, like you can see here, uh, that is a scalar function that we can obtain by integrating forwards and backwards in time in a three-dimensional space, uh, space uh, for an initial condition. And this function has been presented firstly in the paper of Madrid and Manto uh, in the journal Chaos in 2009. But OK. What is the Lagrangian descriptors, the LDs? Um, so it's a very simple technique to use, and it works in the following way. Imagine that we want to reveal phase space structures in a given slice, okay? So we choose a slice, and we define in this slice a grid of initial conditions. And then what we do with these initial conditions is that we integrate these initial conditions forwards and backwards in time for a given uh, time tau. Um, and while we are integrating, we will accumulate along these trajectories a positive quantity defined from the vector field that determines the, the dynamical system that we are studying. So uh, in the original definition of the LDs uh, are calculated by accumulating the arc length of the trajectories. Uh, so we know that if we integrate trajectories forward, 
uh, this function that is a scalar function, remember, is going to detect for you stable manifolds, while if you do the computation only backwards in time, it will detect for you the unstable manifold. So, and how are these uh, manifolds revealed by the method? So the location of these stable and unstable manifolds are revealed in the scalar field at locations where the values of this scalar field change very sharply, okay? So in these regions, the gradient of the scalar field presents very large values. And tau, like here, uh, yeah. is the parameter that we can uh, we have to fix in order to integrate trajectories for different time intervals. All right, so, but there are other versions to calculate Lagrangian descriptors. So that the one that I'm going to use uh, and I will present you here uh, is known uh, as the pin norm definition of the method. So this version works in the following way. Uh, when we calculate trajectories, uh, what we will do is we will accumulate the pin norm of the vector field along its trajectory. So this alternative definition of the method has a very nice property uh, that the location of the invariant manifolds, the stable and stable manifolds, I mean, are located at the points where this, this scalar function is non-differentiable. And this is very nice because we can use features similar to, to the ones that they are using in digital image processing, for example, to extract like edges of photographs, to extract the manifolds from the scalar field, okay? So now, uh, so in chemical reactions, Phase space plays a fundamental role for uh, the deter uh, determination of reaction rates. So it is a transition state theory that provides the framework to study reaction rates. So transition state theory was originally developed in the thermodynamics framework by Ehring, Polanyi, and others. But it was Wigner uh, that later advocated that phase space plays a very relevant role. And it's the arena, basically, where the dynamics really takes place. Uh, but how? is uh, reaction rates measured? So the answer to this question is that reaction rates can be estimated from the flux of trajectories across a phase space that is known as dividing surface. And what is a dividing surface? I mean, a dividing surface uh, is a manifold that has two main properties. That is uh, no recrossing and minimizes the flux of trajectories. And, uh, and it's like a, a phase space object uh, that is uh, constructed to separate the phase space in reactance products, okay? And it, turn out, it turns out that this dividing surface can be constructed from the family of normally, normally hyperbolic invariant manifolds that bifurcates as we raise the energy of the system above the energy of the index one saddle of the potential energy surface, okay? Okay, but um, just to make sure that everybody follows, what is an index one saddle? So an index one saddle is an equilibrium point of uh, Hamilton's equations. And this equilibrium point has saddle times sender times sender times, et cetera, times sender stability. And what does this mean? This means that the, the index one saddle in the multi-dimension potential surface, it is a local maximum in one of the directions and a local minimum in the other direction. For instance, uh, if we take a Hamiltonian system with two degrees of freedom, an index one saddle is just a saddle critical point of the potential. And this index uh, one saddle is between the regions that correspond to the reactants and to the products. Okay, so usually reactants and product, products in a potential energy surface are identified by local minima or what are known as wells. Okay, and one thing here. Um, what is the global dynamics that occur about the index one saddle point? So for think uh, two degrees of freedom system, okay? A uh, phase space is four dimensional and the motion in phase space takes place in a three dimensional constant energy hypersurface. Of course, because this is, uh, because the energy is conserved, okay? So the normally hyperbolic invariant manifolds that bifurcate, as I said before, from index one points, in this case of the two degrees of freedom, uh, is what is known as an unstable periodic orbit. And this unstable periodic orbit, it has a topology of a circle and characterize the phase space bottleneck that trajectories have to cross uh, in order for the reaction to occur. Um, so, I mean, maybe it's better to show you here, like for example, this image here, okay? Uh, you can see here. So this unstable periodic orbit that is associated to the index one saddle has Two dimensional stable and unstable manifolds. And these manifolds have the shape of um, a spherical cylinders, like tubes. Uh, so if we choose an initial condition that is inside these stable and unstable manifolds, like for example, this one, 
uh, we know that they will cross the bottleneck that is here and in, for, in forward time and backwards time respectively. And we can catalog these trajectories as reacting, okay? While the other trajectories that are outside of the cylinders, like for example, this one, will not go through the bottleneck and these trajectories will be non-reacting, okay? So our goal in this work uh, to, is to study transport in phase space between regions that have quantitatively uh, district dynamical behavior, okay? All right. So uh, this is a Hamiltonian that we will study and I will present you here. Uh, as you can see, it's like kinetic plus potential. Uh, the model parameter uh, A uh, is the barrier height corresponding to the potential of the X degrees of freedom. And uh, Vita uh, represents the coupling strength between both degrees of freedom in the system. Uh, for stability reasons, the mass in its uh, degree of freedom is like one. And we define by delta uh, the model parameter representing the, the asymmetry in the double well potential of the X degrees of freedom, okay? And here's the potential energy surface that we consider. Okay, so uh, the Hamilton's equations of motion are given here. Uh, we will consider initially the symmetric and uncoupled case, okay? Uh, so the system is conservative, the dynamics is constrained to, to this uh, three-dimensional energy hypersurface, and the total energy of the system can be split between both degrees of freedom. And just a reminder here, just, just to make sure that everybody is following. Uh, okay, index one saddle has saddle center stability, okay? So that means that the Jacobian has a pair of real eigenvalues of opposite sign and a pair of purely imaginary eigenvalues. Then wells, uh, they are equilibrium points with center stability, their local minimum, and the Jacobian of the real, real, uh, linearization has two pairs of complex and purely imaginary eigenvalues. And lastly, index two saddles have saddle saddle stability is a local maximum equilibrium point. And that means that the Jacobian has two pairs of real eigenvalues. Each pair has opposite signs, okay? Just to make it clear. So uh, here we can see the potential energy surface. Uh, we can see the four index one saddles, the four potential wells, and the index two saddle. Um, so what is an isomerization now? So the simple description of an isomerization reaction is that of a transition between two minima, like two wells, I said before, on a potential energy surface through an index one saddle point. So more precisely, the transition occurs via a trajectory moving along the path on this potential energy surface, like this, uh, from the index one saddle to the potential well that minimizes the potential energy. So this is known in chemistry as a minimum energy path. However, uh, if the topology of the pass uh, contains multiple minima and in addition to index one saddles, it also presents index two saddles like in our case, um, or higher uh, order saddles, uh, isomerization can become very, very complex uh, dynamical phenomenon. But for example, it may be possible for trajectories to transition between wells that are not separated by a single index one saddle, okay? Instead, uh, the wells may be connected by a sequence of uh, minimum energy paths uh, connect from more than one index one saddle. And this is called sequential isomerization, okay? Now, if the pest, like in our case, has an index two saddle, it may be possible for a trajectory to transition from one well to another by bypassing all the traditional minimum energy paths associated with index one saddles and reach its destination via a non-traditional path. And this is known as concerted isomerization. For example, let's say that I want to start from this um, well here, the, the lower uh, left well, and I want to go to this, to the upper right well. There are several ways. One is by sequential isomerization, like from here, from this index one and then through this index one, or from here and then from here. Or in the case of the index to cell, we can see that there's a possibility to move from this well to that one directly over that index to saddle, okay? And this is what is a concerned isomerization. So um, what happens when we linearize our system about the, these fixed points? We can see here uh, the saddle space. 
uh, we can see that the name is located uh, where the stable and unstable manifolds uh, intersect. Um, and in the center space, we can see that the trajectories are periodic. So our goal is to analyze, uh, in terms of the model parameters, uh, the geometrical template of phase space structures. That means the, the underlying isomerization pathways uh, that characterize the dynamical behavior of the system. And we do so by applying the method of Lagrangian descriptors, uh, which is, as uh, we already mentioned before, a scalar diagnostic developed in the context of nonlinear dynamics uh, to reveal the invariant manifolds in phase space. In this work, as I said before, uh, we are using the p-norm definition of uh, the Lagrangian descriptors. All right, now. So given that the system is completely symmetric, remember, first, we talk about the symmetric uncoupled system, OK? Uh, in order to describe the phase space structures that govern isomerization dynamics and characterize the bottleneck regions in the vicinity of uh, the index one cells of the potential energy surface, uh, we focus our analysis uh, on this equilibrium point uh, that is associated to the upper index one saddle, separating uh, the upper left and upper right uh, wells, OK? So um, for our analysis, uh, we fix the total energy of the system. And we consider a phase space slice that goes through the lower index one cell of the pass. And that is this, uh, this slice. And another point uh, surface of section that coincides with the configuration plane. OK? And let me tell you here that the energy of the wells, in this case, is minus 1 over 2. The energy of the index one saddles, it's a bit higher, is one, uh, minus one over four. And the energy of the index two saddle is above, it's zero, okay? Um, and we will describe now the, um, the isomerization dynamics uh, for the symmetric and uncoupled Hamiltonian uh, system in terms of the physical phase uh, space, geometrical structures associated to the index one and index two saddles presenting the potential energy surface. And as I mentioned before, we, we have fixed uh, the, the value of the total energy, OK? And this energy, as I said before, it is uh, distributed among both degrees of freedom, OK? And now, remember, I told you um, uh, that the energy of the wells of the index one saddles, the index two. So imagine if the total energy of the system is between minus 1 over 2 and minus 1 over 4, OK? For this case, the wells of the potential energy surface are isolated from each other since the energy of the system is below that of the index one saddles that interconnect the wells. Okay, so the motion of an initial condition that starts in one of the wells will remain trapped in that well forever. Okay, but if we have like the total energy of the system to be between minus one over four and zero, uh, the total energy now is above that of any of the index one saddles. Uh, but below the energy of the index to saddle at the origin. Okay, so all potential wells now are connected and isomerization can take place, okay? And this allows the transit of trajectories from well to well through the phase space bottlenecks um, that open in the neighborhood of the equilibrium points associated to the index one saddles. But remember, uh, this energy is below the index to saddle, so the region of the index to saddle is forbidden for now, okay? So, for example, um, let's uh, here we have computed the Lagrangian descriptors uh, with the integration time uh, five uh, from the two phase space slices uh, defined that I defined before, and we can clearly see that the method nicely captures the intersection of the relevant invariant manifolds that determine isomerization dynamics with um, the surfaces of section. So an important conclusion that can be drawn from the success of this technique for unveiling the geometry of phase space is that by looking at the Lagrangian descriptor output and having a detailed now knowledge and understanding about the phase space structures present I mean, in this problem, one can easily and systematically determine the dynamical uh, fate of any initial condition of the Hamiltonian system. OK, so for now, for example, OK. It's, um, we have here in panel A, we depict the output of Lagrangian descriptors calculate on the slice P1 that I saw you before. OK, what we can see is like three distinct phase space uh, regions. 
uh, separate by curves where the Lagrangian descriptor scalar field is non-differentiable, okay? And which correspond to the invariant stable and unstable manifolds of the unstable periodic orbits that are associated to the index one shadows. So uh, the homoclinic orbits that uh, merge from the, from the saddle point zero, zero uh, represent the stable and unstable spherical cylinders that are born from the unstable periodic orbit of the bottom index one saddle. And these manifolds, um, which are coincident, extend parallel, like if you can see here, parallel to the x-axis until they reach the boundary uh, of the energy hypersurface where they will bounce back to return to the unstable uh, periodic orbit. So in this panel also, uh, this, uh, this panel also reveals a cross section of the stable and unstable manifolds associated to the left and right index one saddles, which are located inside the homoclinic orbits. Okay, And this is a bit confusing because at, at, at first, this, this fact seems to indicate that the tube manifolds of the left and right index one saddles are inside those of the bottom index one cell, but, but this is misleading. So how we can understand that? One has to be very careful when interpreting uh, the phase space geometry, since the interior of the tube manifolds corresponding to the bottom index one uh, cell is in fact the region outside, okay? Um, what else? So the, um, the circular shape uh, cross sections uh, obtained from the intersection of the stable and unstable invariant manifolds on the left uh, of the left and right index one saddles with a P1 slice, like we are here, are uh, known in the chemistry as reactive islands. Okay. This region for this name is that all initial conditions chosen inside this region, delimited by these curves will be transported along their evolution through the phase space bottleneck that exists in the neighborhood of the unstable uh, periodic orbit from which the invariant manifolds uh, that give rise to this uh, reactive uh, island structure are born, okay? So all initial conditions inside the reactive island are classified as reactive, okay? Since they will move between neighboring wells uh, through in the index one saddles of the potential energy surface. So, uh, if an initial condition is elected outside a reactive uh, island, it will not cross the index one saddle associated to, the, to that uh, reactive island. In order to validate what I'm saying now, uh, we have chosen uh, three initial conditions in these uh, slides. Um, okay, so first we have the magenta initial condition uh, that is uh, initially located in the lower right well. This is in, it is inside the reactive island of the right index one saddle. And what we see, it goes through the bottleneck and ends up to the upper right well. And if we extend the time of the evolution further, it will move back and forth between the wells. So the same time of behavior uh, is observed uh, for the red initial condition that evolves between the lower left and row, lower right wells of the potential energy surface, because it is inside the spherical cylinders of the bottom index one saddle, okay? So, but on the other hand, we have this uh, cyan initial condition that is outside the tube manifolds of the unstable periodic orbit of the left and bottom um, index one saddle. So what happens? It will remain trapped forever in the lower left well region, okay? And in this panel here, um, we can see, um, all the, the three-dimensional visualization of the phase space structures that are that the resulting dynamics they gave rise to inside the uh, energy hypersurface. And from the observed dynamical behavior, it is important to remark that only sequential isomerization between neighboring uh, wells is allowed in this situation, okay? Remember that. And since the tube manifolds of different unstable periodic orbits do not intersect, Okay, so there are no heteroclinic connections and initial condition that starts in the lower left well region cannot reach the upper right well of the potential energy surface along its evolution by moving from well to well. This is not the case here, okay. Uh, the only two options available for this case here uh, is just to be trapped forever in the lower left well or that it moves back and forth uh, the lower left and lower right or upper left. Uh, well, uh, if it is located inside the, um, the corresponding reactive islands. Okay, but um, it's better, I think here, let's, let's go here. So, 
um, all the, the, this dynamical behavior that we have uh, explained so far uh, can also be understood by looking at the face portraits here. So given that the system is separable, remember that, so um, that the total energy can be naturally partitioned uh, between each degree of freedom. Uh, let's, let's see the following case, like if the, um, the energy of the X degrees of freedom and the energy of the Y degrees of freedom is negative, okay? In this situation, uh, this energy level corresponds to trajectory uh, like- Excuse me for an interruption. Yes. Someone uh, is not muted, probably Thoma. Thomas Kotoulas, please mute your. Someone is uh, has its microphone on and we hear some noise. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Okay. Should I continue? We can continue, yeah, please. Okay. All right. So I was, what I was saying is like, let's consider the following case. It's like both degrees of freedom to be negative. So uh, the energy, I mean. Uh, so these energy levels correspond to trajectories like inside the homoclean curves, right? Uh, and therefore, we know that neither X nor Y will change sign. This means that trajectories will be trapped in the lower left well region of the potential energy surface. But if we consider, for example, uh, the case where the energy of the X degrees of freedom is negative and the energy of the Y degrees of freedom is positive, since the energy like uh, of the y degrees of freedom is positive, we are outside the separatrix, okay, uh, in the yp-y plane, and that means that the trajectory is periodic in y, and the same the sign of y changes along the evolution, okay, and since the energy in uh, x is negative, this trajectory is inside the separatrix in the x-p-x plane. So X does not change uh, sign along the evolution. So what happens is that we have trajectories that they move back and forth between the lower left and upper left wells through the bottleneck associated to the left index one saddle. Then if we think, for example, another case like uh, the energy of the X degrees of freedom to be positive, okay? And the energy of the Y degrees of freedom to be negative, this is something analogous to the, to the one I mentioned before, but the roles of the X and the Y degrees of freedom have been interchanged. Uh, so we will see, we will have trajectories that move back and forth between the lower left and lower right wells, okay? Um, so then if we consider the case that uh, the, the energy for the X degrees of freedom is zero and the energy of the Y degrees of freedom is negative, See, so since the energy in the X degrees of freedom is zero, this implies that uh, we are on the separatrix of the, in the X PX plane, uh, where the trajectory does not change sign in X due to the fact that uh, the energy in Y is positive, um, sorry, uh, negative in this case, we are inside the separatrix in the Y PY plane and Y does not change sign along the trajectory evolution. So in this, uh, in this case, uh, the trajectory is involving on the spherical cylinder uh, of the bottom index one saddle one uh, that asymptotically approach the unstable periodic orbit. And I mean, uh, more or less the same will happen if um, the energy of the X degrees of freedom is negative and the energy of the Y degrees of freedom is zero. Okay. So now what happens? Um, when the, the energy of the system is exactly that of the index to saddle at the origin. So uh, at this uh, cri crucial uh, energy value, the unstable periodic orbits of the four index one saddles that exist in the, in the potential energy surface meet at the origin, okay? And this is, this is a coincidence of the growth uh, in the size of the unstable periodic orbits and their corresponding spherical cylinders as the system energy is raising towards zero from below, okay? So as a result, the phase space region associated to initial conditions that are trapped in one of the potential wells shrinks and disappears at this energy level, at the, the zero energy level. So, and this is really nicely captured by the Lagrangian descriptors in this figure, uh, where we can see that the homoclean trajectories in the form of, um, figure eight, which are born from the unstable periodic orbit of the bottom index one saddle, partition uh, the phase space into two regions. Here we have two district uh, dynamical behaviors. Uh, and then what else? Uh, the left-right uh, homoclinic um, trajectory 
also represents uh, the spherical sea layers of the left right index one saddles. Uh, and notice that the region that led to the well trapping in the negative energy that we have here before, uh, here it disappears and no longer exists. Okay. Uh, since the, the spherical cylinders of the index one cells completely fill the energetically accessible phase space. Okay. So initial conditions located outside the figure eight um, will evolve back and forth between the lower left and lower right wells. And those inside the, the left uh, homoclinic trajectory move between the lower left and upper left wells. So now let's see what happens if the, um, the total energy of the system is positive, okay? There is above that of the index to saddle located at the origin. So in this situation, uh, the unstable periodic orbits associated to the left and right index one saddles that exist in the system for non-positive energies merge, okay? And they are forming a larger unstable periodic orbit related to the index to saddle. And this phenomenon occurs also for the unstable periodic orbits of the top and bottom index one saddles. And this result is that uh, the, the, the two unstable periodic orbits, let's call them, for example, U1 and U2, uh, are responsible for characterizing the dynamics in, induced by the index uh, to saddle in the phase space. Uh, so we applying the Lagrangian descriptors here in order to reveal again the phase space structures associated to the index to saddle at the origin. So we have calculated the LDs uh, using the integration time again, five. And in panel A, we demonstrate that Lagrangian descriptor succeeds in highlighting three uh, dynamically uh, distinct phase space uh, regions. And we probe the dynamical fate of trajectories by choosing three initial conditions, uh, one in each region. And we involve them in forward time and plot the projections onto configuration space uh, here in, in panel B. Uh, of course, it's uh, superimposed with uh, the output of the Lagrangian descriptors in the phase space lines. And we depict their evolution in a three-dimensional energy hypersurface to, to help with the visualization of the geometrical phase-based structures, okay? So what we see is that both the RAND and magenta initial conditions display dynamical behavior corresponding to sequential isomerization. Since they start their evolution inside the stable and unstable manifolds of the unstable periodic orbits U1 and U2. In contrast, the blue initial condition is inside the spherical cylinders of both unstable periodic orbits associated to the index to saddle and, and therefore exhibits, uh, exhibits um, concert isomerization. And this trajectory is giving rise to go over the index to saddle at the origin. Okay. So now I will be a bit brief here. Um, he, what happens in the asymmetric case, but uh, it is asymmetric, but uncoupled case, okay? So we consider Vita to be zero. Uh, and remember that in the symmetric case that Delta was zero, uh, the potential air surface uh, had nine critical points, four index one saddles, four potential wells, and one index two saddle at the origin. Okay, and now here we, we check the effect of increasing the value of the asymmetry parameter delta above zero is that uh, the critical points of the symmetric system that originally line, uh, I think it was x equals minus one over uh, square root of two and x equals zero. So what will happen here is like, we will approach each other until they collide and three simultaneously saddle no bifurcation occur uh, at the critical value of the um, asymmetry parameter. I, I, it's not here written, but it's uh, the value is uh, two over three in the power of three over two, okay? And uh, we can see here in this picture, uh, in this figure, the potential energy high, uh, no, sorry, uh, the potential energy surface landscape on the left and the potential curves in the configuration space. Here, uh, just for you to have an idea is for Delta equals 0 0.2 here is uh, for that is lower than the critical value that the bifurcations uh, happen. Here is for uh, delta equals 0 0.8 that it's uh, sorry, this is for exactly the, the, the critical value. And here is for delta equal uh, 0 0.8 that it's uh, above uh, the critical value. Okay. 
All right, and here uh, we depict the potential um, remember, it's uncoupled, so we have split the, the degrees of freedom. And for the x degrees of freedom, the potential energy is uh, this one, ux. Uh, so here we depict the potential ux for different values of the asymmetry, together with the corresponding dynamics and that it gives rise to the in, in the x px phase portrait for different values of the asymmetry parameter. Okay, again, it's for the same uh, values I mentioned before. Uh, just really briefly, uh, here we can see the Lagrangian descriptors that they are calculated again for uh, for integration time five uh, for different uh, values of the asymmetry parameter. Okay, and we can see how the, the we have different district areas with different dynamical behavior. I will not give more details here. Uh, and then at the end, of course, we consider the coupled case, but here it's coupled case but symmetric okay so it is obvious that here in the panel a for example we have the output for the lagrangian descriptor and another thing i want to share is that okay it's a coupled case like vita here is not zero anymore but it's really small it's 0 0.2 but still we can see a lot of things happening okay uh, here is the output of the lagrangian descriptors uh, for this energy and in panel B, we have the Poincaré map that is superimposed with a stable and unstable manifolds that we extract from the gradient of the LD function. Uh, we can see like a chaotic C uh, and few a very small regular regions. And again, we chose uh, some initial conditions to see the fate of these initial conditions, okay? But what is the difference now? The difference is that of course, uh, the invariant stable and unstable manifolds of the unstable periodic orbits associated to the index one cells of the potential energy surface begin to intersect. And this creates homoclinic and enteroclinic toggles. Okay. So that helps to spread chaos throughout the energy hypersurface while motion takes place. So, for example, what we can see here is that for this initial condition one, we can see that uh, there is a trapping here. And we have seen this uh, behavior as well before uh, in the uncoupled case. In case two, we can see that there is a um, sequential isomerization. From that well, we move to the, from the lower uh, left well, we move to the upper left well, and it moves back and forth. For the third initial condition, it's similar, but it moves from the, the bottom well, left well to the bottom uh, right well, back and forth. And here is something different we didn't have before. So if I start, for example, with this initial condition that is located here to the, it is located to the lower uh, right well, it moves to that well, to the upper right well, and then continues and it moves to that well, to the, um, upper uh, left well and it can continue so we didn't have that this is because of the heteroclinic uh, connections okay and in the paper i don't mention it here but in the paper uh, we have considered like uh, the si similar case but for larger beta and it's, it's this paper here uh, but so far i mean there are so many open questions and so far we haven't considered the case where we have, for example, couple and asymmetric, uh, that will be a bit complicated. We haven't done it yet, but it's like an open question for, for us for the future. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let me here take this view. Okay, now we can see you as well. It's time for question. Is someone in the audience first who wants to ask something? And then, yes, okay, we go to, to the our friend. So, Harris, go on, ask your question. Hi, Panos. Hi, Macrina. Nice to see you. Thank you very much for this very interesting talk. I have a couple of questions which are probably naive. Sorry for that, and <laughs> mainly focused on the uh, on the numerics and the techniques and the techniques. So, uh, <clears throat> my my first, if you can go back to one of the 
uh, panels. Yeah, also here, for example, that's mm -hmm. that's 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 fine. So one question is is the following: if uh, if I see, let's say, panel A, uh, I suppose that the coloring is done according to the value of the Lagrangian descriptor. Am I correct? Exactly. So okay. So then let's say uh, lower values towards zero point seven. Uh, which correspond to dark uh, areas are also for the islands of stability or the center, so the, the minima, but also more or less we have the same value for the uh, for the X, the, the, the unstable manifold. So my question, which obviously when you will increase the energy or the coupling or the nonlinearity of the system there, you will have more chaos and while the other regions are the regions where you have the tiny or bigger islands of stability. So my question is, I see the picture here and it is very clear and the Lagrangian descriptors can show that, but uh, the values of the Lagrangian descriptor for both uh, regions of regularity and the regions of chaoticity seem to be of the same order. So am I correct or is there something that I'm missing yeah. there? Yeah, no, but you can fix that. You can fix that. You can fix the range of the values of the regression descriptors if you want to be between specific values. So you can fix that. Yeah, but here I'm saying for this range, which is fine, I mm -hmm. see black points also or darker regions also for the regular and the chaotic. So what I'm saying is probably I'm not able to discriminate between regularity and chaoticity by just looking at the value of the Lagrangian descriptor. Yeah, no. Okay, so that's that's my my understanding is 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 correct there. Yes. That's that's just just okay. Another thing is again technical. Uh, you said that you are computing that using some tau, and here I see that tau is five, which is the time that you are integrating forward and backwards in time. So how does these results that you have shown us depend on tau? If I increase tau, if I decrease tau, probably increase tau. Do I have some? Uh, uh, okay, more computational time, obviously, but do I gain something or it is not necessary? Or let's say some comment about how do you define a, a suitable tau in order to capture correctly the dynamics? Yeah, that's an excellent question. And there is not a, um, a specific answer to that. But the thing is that while you are increasing the integration time, you're getting more structures and more structures, and then you will not be able to understand what is happening there. And then if you take like tau lower, maybe you cannot really see the regions or something is missing. So you have to play a bit with the values of tau until you understand what is happening with the regions. Okay, so that, 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 that's that's fine. I am, that what you are saying is tau can increase the complexity of what you are seeing and depending on what you want to see, if you want to see the main structures or the main reasons for chaoticity, that's a small tau, whatever small means is enough. That's That's, that's fine, thank you. And a last question is, uh, if I understand correctly, this the dynamical system also for the energies above the, the local uh, maximum or the saddle two point, uh, we, we do not have escapes. The, the energies, the, the trajectories are confined. Am, am I correct or? Am, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you consider the hills region and then you cannot go outside of there. Okay. but. If we try to apply, and probably people have already done that, so uh, forgive my ignorance. If you try to apply that for systems that we have escapes, uh, is the method working or will we work properly there? Or since we will have orbits that eventually escape, that means that tau should be small in order to avoid that, or we want to, 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 to see that. So my, my question is, what can we gain and what are the, the numerical uh, precautions that we have to take if we study a system where we can lose uh, orbits going to infinity? Like, I, I think that, um, so that's a very good question. And I think uh, with Matthäus, we have, uh, we had one paper lately and we had, for example, the point was at infinity. So maybe th this is something similar to what uh, you're saying. We could uh, capture, uh, yeah. Uh, we use variable time like that descriptors. In case that we have open Hamiltonian systems, we use variable time because uh, uh, we don't fix the tau. Okay. And uh, if we, we define according to the problem, we define the region that we have and we say that uh, after this region, when we arrive at this, uh, at this boundary, uh, stop the integration. 
Okay. So, so, so the changing tau means that uh, you can also focus to different dynamical behaviors in order to avoid, if you want, uh, escapes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and not to have problem with accuracy, and uh, which changes yeah. the tau. Here, uh, the system is closed. And, uh, it's closed, and uh, we use uh, we they fix the tau. The tau. Exactly. And, uh, in many times, we use variable time like that and schedules, as we say that we change the time of integration. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's all from right. my side. And thanks again. It was really nice to see oh, some people, also some faces, also your, your face, uh, unfortunately, online. Last week or two weeks ago, I was in Greece. I, I visited some, some people there, which was nice. But yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Okay. So uh, let me ask also a question. Uh, if in, when you plot uh, the isopotentials, let's say of the index one and index two cases, do you see a difference in the saddle uh, geometry or something? There is a difference there? Uh, you mean? You have index one and index two uh, like... saddle points, right? Uh, it, for instance, there, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Because here we have in front of us. So, okay, so this is index two saddle. Yes, here we have the index two saddle. And yes. here we have the other saddle. So, and the yeah. index one saddle point, I see the, uh, the, uh, the directions, the stable and the unstable. What about the index two saddle? So, uh, I'm a little bit lost in the geometry there. How is this a saddle point? So, as I said, where before, is the stable and the unstable direction in that case? <laughs> Uh -huh. Yeah, it's not possible to show it here, but yeah, exactly. Well, that's yeah. <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah, it's a, I cannot show it here. Yes, but the, you have two directions there, right? It's like a, a local maximum there. The way I see it's, that, it's a, it's a maximum. It's a hilltop, as we call it. Okay, yeah. and so there, there is a, a stable and unstable direction. You mean? Yes. Uh, yeah, but it's uh, more complicated because uh, uh, louder, Manfros, we don't hear you. Or uh, come over here and uh, speak. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's more complicated because here we don't have only one direction. Here is double and stable if we say in astronomy at the Libyan point. And it's very rare in the two-dimensional Hamiltonian system because, uh, for example, uh, we don't hear you, Manfros. Speak closer to the microphone. Ah, do you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can hear him in South Africa. How is it possible that you cannot hear him? <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, I want to clarify that this is a double and stable equilibrium point. It's not simple and stable equilibrium point. Okay, well, there are, have to be directions there, right? Yeah, but uh, you have, uh, as in the three degrees of freedom, you have heights and surface, not exactly heights and uh, direction. Anything, but the, the, there's in one direction, yes, you have to approach and the other one to... Yeah, yeah. To and this is, power, uh, right? this actually can be presented from this uh, uh, maximum, but in order to see this in the face space is something different. You must compute hmm. these heights and the surfaces. Okay. Okay, let me let me see if there are more questions here. No. Okay. Then, if not, then uh, um, I can thank you very much again. Thank you very thank much you for, for the invitation. Nice talk. Thank you very much. Okay.